so a very good evening to one and all present and we welcome you all at easy schooling easy schooling is a community of 150 plus schools 30000 plus parents and 10000 plus teachers in which we are working with the schools to transform their admission process smartly through artificial intelligence and technology we aim at solving all parenting related problems like admission psychology etc the topic for today's session is gamification of learning making education more interactive for students the session is organized in association with borat edu games borat edu games is a company that has created a line of educational board games aimed directly at students to enhance their knowledge through the use of interactive thought provoking board games they believe that learning should not only be educational but also fun their mission is to enhance the education system to increase enthusiasm among students to learn about various subjects and now i'll be introducing all our guest panelists for the session to begin with we have with us mrs neeti bhalla saini ma'am executive principal at gems modern academy she is an educator and inquired by heart and has been in field of education for the past 24 years with cbse and ib school she believes in inquiry based learning explorations and play in the early years where learners get ample opportunity to wander wander explore and discover she has strong beliefs in education being learning for life and creating lifelong learners she has also been a part of the inception teams of two renowned schools pathway world school and guinness global school we welcome you ma'am thank you most welcome ma'am next we have with us miss pooja lamba ma'am she joined the millennium school sitapur road lucknow as the founding head mistress in november 2016 She comes with more than twenty years of rich experience in the field of education, childcare, and retail. At the heart of Mrs. Pooja Lamba, approach to education is a clear ambition to provide an exciting learning environment in which children are encouraged to discover and develop their talents. She is trained and certified in innovative methods of teaching and enhanced study in dealing with children. She is a music lover and strongly propounds that from ordinary we can achieve the extraordinary. Then we have with us Dr. Minakshi Narula ma'am, principal at Shameford Futuristic Oraya. She is a pedagogical leader, crafter, YouTuber, quiller, writer and calligrapher. associated with the arena of education and igniting young minds since 2001 dr narula is a versatile person who has command in teaching logistics of science the nitty gritty of language and the technical concepts of it while focusing on sustainable development goals she is a global teacher awardee 2020 rashtriya shikshana award awardee and has many feathers in her cap of achievements she believes empower yourself to empower your team we welcome you ma'am thank you on this wonderful platform thank you ma'am next we have with us mr rahul uttam chandani founder at borat edu games being restricted from tv at early age he has been largely involved with board games all his life and so wanted to start his business to share the joy of the world He has completed his masters in business management and worked at international finance companies like Deloitte before starting the business. He truly believes education should be fun and so is the motto that Borat Edu Games lives by every day. I welcome you all. Thank you. And now we'll be beginning with the questions. So my first question is to Neeti ma'am and that is that a common problem during this period of learning revolves around online classes how can we make online classes more interactive and engaging for students uh, thank you uh, nikita so what what is the primary thing that's happening now when we are in real time on uh, during the offline mode the students are around you and you can engage them in various ways by giving them tasks and engaging them while they are online it is one teacher and 
she's restricted to that whole classroom scenario only one space so what we've been able to do is uh, looking at the core of the, the issue is that you give children and you, you involve them and how do you involve them you give them choices so there are various online tools which can be used to make the classroom learning very interactive for example um, a tool like choice board where the task is open ended so there are a range of tasks that are assigned to children and they are all open ended so they have a choice they have a voice and they have ownership of doing that task it becomes more interesting rather than just because when we went into online teaching and learning we realized it was too much of talk talk method by the teacher and there were very few things that could make it more interactive with the students so as we evolved and we learned we weren't experts in online teaching and learning all of us none of the teachers we were just thrown into that sea so as we evolved and as we learned we realized that uh, how online teaching could actually match the standards of what we were doing offline to give students that ownership of doing things there are things like using flip classroom method where the children can be assigned a task at home and they research on it and they come back the next day and they have a discussion so the teacher's role starts reducing from being a teacher to a facilitator in facilitating the child's learning um zoom teams google meet all these then also evolved along with the online learning uh, platform and they started coming up with uh, options of uh, breakout rooms where you know the teacher introduced a concept and the children could go into the breakout rooms and have a discussion and come back and the teacher could move from one room to the other like she would do in a classroom that give them a task group task collaborative task and let them work in their small groups and move from one group to the other um, so we we were able to match uh, a lot of those aspects but something which always goes missing is that personal touch which we've not been able to achieve and we cannot till we go back offline um also in the during the online teaching there's another aspect wherein you assign the work a day prior to the child so that the child is ready with the materials so if you want to do an experiential learning uh, for the class for the child in the class the teacher may think of a task in advance and give those materials that for example i'll take an example of an early years that in an early years classroom scenario the teacher can tell the children that okay tomorrow be ready with a sand tray or be ready with a little tray with little uh, flower in it and then she starts doing alphabets with them this is like a very early years scenario i'm talking about and she starts doing the alphabets in the classroom in her home scenario and where the child is also doing it we've used um, macaronis we've used um, pebbles and all those things to also play around while online but then again you need to prepare the parent and the child in advance to be ready with those things um i can just go endlessly on to this uh, bringing in more play in the classroom so when you bring in play you try and make uh, you know bring in more theatrics into the class especially while telling stories and uh, there are various ways that the teachers can continuously involve themselves um, and evolve their teaching and learning ma'am we definitely agree with you that bringing in more play is the need of the hour uh, so manakshi ma'am would you like to add upon the same yeah thank you uh, first of all neeti ma'am for the wonderful words for the wonderful thoughts and uh, i would surely agree 100% with ma'am whatever ma'am is, has said just right now like uh, we need a lot of engagement in the classes as in the physical classroom we had lot of engagement right number of activities we were doing and can you imagine even when we uh teaching the uh, prepositions we used to play hide and seek game in the classroom so a number of activities uh, over there so they are missing on this online platform but we are trying our level best to engage our students on this online platform too i uh, have uh, incorporated number of games uh in my classes too now if i say gamification through learning number of tools are available on which we can have number of games in our classes but again you see positive and negative effects are there we want to engage the students on this online platform that's why we are giving them a number of gamification tools but again then adds on to the screen time right so we are having uh, those kind of activities in our class guys we think uh, uh like uh, we are modifying those strategies we're tweaking them a little like making thing thinking visible number of strategies are there available so we are just tweaking them on this online platform like suppose i am taking this online class i make my students to move around the house collect different things and show it to me talk to the parent uh, i am in to say get their thoughts pen them down and then come to me and then speak 
it means lot of engagement is there and screen time is also reduced for them and uh, they are also engaged in the classes otherwise you see if i am speaking here and i do not know behind the screen whether the children they are listening to me or uh, they have turned off their videos they are engaged in something else and they just switch between different windows and they keep on playing their games too because i have observed my son also doing the same in his classes when he is there he switches between different windows and nowadays so the children they don't they know very well how to have multiple screens on the same window because they are so tech savvy they are playing too they are doing like the, i mean to say can you imagine like i am once it happened with me like i am sitting over here i was thinking like maybe the child's screen it's not moving because of internet issue but the child was there in the class he has taken a screenshot and used that only as a profile picture and i was thinking matlab the screen is not moving or what is happening and they're so innovative so creative so we we need to engage them we need to find different ways to engage them on this one uh, online platform through this physical games yes yes ma'am we totally agree with you uh, so rahul sir would you like to add upon that some solutions maybe so that uh, gamification into education does not adds to the screen hours definitely so i i i think this example that you just mentioned was extremely innovative i've also seen another video where uh, students put their phone over here and they put it on a stand and in the phone they either put a picture of themselves or something just to make it look like they are there but you know they actually go on and do other things and uh, i i agree with first one neeti ma'am said about you know we have to change the stock talk method that that principals are doing and all these examples are good ones i especially like the ones there are games which are not on the screen like you said if they have to prepare a sandbox or they have to you know get some objects from their house or something because it's like a fun game which will help them concentrate a bit better and it also reduce their screen time so i i actually uh, saw your uh, youtube page uh, minakshi ma'am and i saw the narula education and uh, some of the gaming ideas that you have there which are quite nice my only against slack like, criticism is that they are you know all screen time related so something that i had uh, tried to do while uh, you know forming this company is make actual board games different subjects wise so right now i have a geography one a math one an english one a history one which are actual board games which can be played with the families or even in the classes like how you said the breakout classrooms where teachers can assign it to different students and then from that they can you know kind of try to learn so obviously maybe we'll talk about it in detail but it's nice hearing all the different ideas that all the schools and all of you are trying to do to kind of make it a little more fun yes so moving on to the next question and that is to pooja ma'am that is there anything that parents can do on their side to help make online classes more interactive uh thank you for the question nikita i personally feel that uh, parents are our first guru as children they are the one who uh, help us learn the baby steps how to walk how to talk so in our formative years and otherwise also they play a vital role yes so uh, but uh, we always take parents as our partners who actually help to create global citizens who will be the leaders of tomorrow so if uh, here i would to begin with i would say that together we should actually help our children to uh, to grow and to evolve so that you know they should have wings to fly so uh, as facilitators and as parents we need to hold each other's hand especially we've always done this thank you to all the parents and especially during these difficult times why because the um, uh when we used to have regular classes during traditional uh, classes uh, the teachers used to take the owners they used to uh, make sure uh, that the classes are interactive they used to prepare uh, their classrooms the resources and everything but now i would request uh, all the parents to take the lead they should actually uh, give more uh, time to their children in order to you know we uh, evolve them as good learners they should actually first find a place they should actually uh, help uh, them as a learning coach right and i personally feel they should actually the first there are certain things which they should do in order to make learning more interactive for children while they are at home during covid times and uh, during these uh, covid times the first thing which they should do is they should find a cozy place a comfortable place for their children right and they should uh, make that place so comfortable so vibrant 
and all the required resources which are necessary for e-learning should be made available there, the stick-ons, the headphones, the charger of their laptops or their uh, tabs or iPads. And then we should help them to create a daily plan. I think uh, fortunately or unfortunately, this is the time which, you know, this is the best time where parents are getting time to spend more time with their children. Especially for working parents, I think it's a boom uh, for them. Why? Because they are able to uh, transmit those qualities which they have as working parents. They uh, are blessed. They know how to uh, use these uh, online apps like Zoom, Microsoft Teams or Google Classroom. So this should help them. They should help their children to uh, learn to use these tools effectively. They should help them to uh, create a daily plan to make them more organized. They should actually uh, prioritize their tasks, uh, which is more important. Uh, they should prioritize the, on the basis of daily tasks, the priority-based tasks, or the additional tasks which they want their children to do, rather than just attending their uh, classes on, you know, just like a daily routine. They should be more organized. And they should actually try to determine as educated parents the learning pattern of their child, because there are different kinds of learners. Some are visual learners, some are auditory learners, some are kinesthetic learners. The teachers are doing their role effectively. But, uh, and I would say that they are the warriors. They, uh, it, is not, it was not easy for teachers, especially teachers who are not tech savvy, to use these apps. Like, it was a challenge for them, and especially teaching in a regular classroom was totally different. And teaching uh, online, uh, when the parents are sitting on your head, I would say, observing each and everything and uh, observing the minutest of the details. And it acts as a positive point as well as a negative point also. Because at times there are some teachers who need their own space. They are not very comfortable uh, teaching in front of parents, right? So it was a very difficult time. But yes, with the help of parents and with the feedback of parents, teachers were also able to evolve themselves, learn, and they came out as a survivor. And they have really done a great job. Secondly, I also feel that uh, they should make learning fun for children rather than just asking them to sit for their regular classes and uh, you know uh, keep thanking them or keep uh, you know shouting them that I also have to attend my meeting or I also have to take to different jobs. So they should make learning fun. Right? As a teacher, they are ready. To, uh, they they know that uh, for example, they have a section uh, wherein they will be learning prepositions. They should help their uh, ward prepare some extra uh, resources or some uh, something out of the box to be shown as a presentation to the teacher. This is the best time where you can, as a parent, make learning uh, you know, a very uh, happy experience. This will be a lifetime experience for every child. And moreover, they should be in touch with the teachers regularly and they should keep taking the feedback of their children. And not to forget, uh, netiquettes are very, very important. So they should actually help their children. Uh, they should sensitize them about uh, different netiquettes which are important. I think there are various things wherein the parents can help them. And this will actually uh, help them to come up uh, as a successful uh, and uh, successful citizens of our country with parents and teachers will together help the children to come out of this difficult time because it's not easy especially for young children to sit at okay. home because they are missing the regular school time whenever i have a word with my students they say that ma'am we are missing school whenever we have any uh, social uh, gatherings online or uh, assemblies or any uh, competitions the first thing is ma'am when will the school reopen we are missing our school badly so I personally feel this is a time wherein uh, this should be a beautiful uh, or fond memories which the students should always cherish the time which they have spent with their parents, right? And what learnings they have taken back because uh, you know I personally feel that children basically learn from what they observe rather than you can't instill things in them. Whatever we do, we you know we are like role models for them. We teachers, we if, as parents, we always set a uh, you know. We, we are as role models, so we should always set right example for our children. Yes, ma'am. 
Thank you, ma'am. So it has been rightly mentioned by you uh, that during off offline classes, teachers used to actually analyze all the methods for learning. And as mentioned by you that uh, learning should be fun. So my next question is to Neeti, ma'am, and that is to understand the concept of gamification of learning better. If you can tell us what are the underlying principles behind this method of learning? Um, thank you and thank you, Ms. Pooja. Uh, she mentioned it very well to say that uh, the parents need to be spending that time and using it as a boon to, you know, to interact with the children more and more. Um, coming to what you've just asked me, um, well, you know, in, in, a, in a very professional world, if you look at uh, the scenario of gaming, and these are researches, this is not what I'm talking about, but I've been reading about this and some of the researches which says that 10% of what we really learn from books and texts and courses uh, comes into our use. 20% uh, would come in nearly from feedback. And it's it's as much as 70% that comes in with experiences. So, and as, as educators, we need to make sure that we increase those experiences for uh, children, uh, be it online or be it offline. Some of the basic principles that kind of uh, underline the gamification aspect is that, um, you know, when you're looking at it, you, you need to make sure that it is empowering the students. So like I said in my um, first bit also that, that students need to have that ownership, that choice of doing the things uh, when, you're, when you're looking at gamification. Again, before we go into the principles, we look at the two aspects. One is an online mode of gamification and another is the offline mode, which um, Mr. Rahul's been talking about, the board games and things like that. Um, so we, we, I'm going to talk mixed uh, from both perspectives, more from the offline version and then going into the online version. So when you talk about, about gamification, it is about the child's own own interest into something. That's what the child will get attached to when they start experiencing. And that's when they start enjoying learning. The other aspect is that, that the experiences that they're having in classroom, they need to be more persistent with that. So when they're experimenting something, they will fail. They know that they're going to fail with it. So it starts to build in persistence in them that, okay, if I've tried this once, and I failed, I'm going to try it again. These are some of those bigger um, aspects which start getting built into a child. Um, it is also very self-directional when you're when you're looking at gamification through learning, that the child is able to um, apply what they're learning and into experiences. And if it doesn't go right, then they kind of change the direction and they modify it. So they're learning from doing things with daily um, experiments. It, it also helps them build uh, social skills and collaborative skills because sometimes they can they realize that they can't do it alone. They need to have more friends to do it. So for example, if you, uh, a little example of a, my favorite uh, math game in a, in a classroom scenario, a board game is uh, Battleship. I think that's one of the best games to teach children about coordinates in all four quadrants, two quadrants, whatever. And they know they can't play it alone. And that whole team spirit comes in. They partner with each other and then they start playing this game. So gamification also brings that into the children. And, um, you know, it, it also, it, it's like a sense of a flow of instructions for them one after the other. Sometimes the teacher is just a spectator in the class when children are actually working around with gamification learning and the teacher is just kind of guiding their thinking. Uh, Dr. Minakshi talked about uh, making thinking visible. So the teacher is providing those avenues to children to make their thinking more visible and the students are just involved in what they are doing. So these are some of those underlying principles, but when we apply, you can apply them into the classroom offline scenario and onto online scenario as well. Uh, both, it can be worked around both places. Um, one of the things that I always uh, used to say that, uh, and and I tell parents also that it is important that the child uh, spends time doing the work that is assigned and is, is uh, you know, working on projects that are assigned. Also, if your child is into games and playing uh, games, online games and developing those, it is important that they know what they are doing with it and the right direction, not just uh, unlimited time spent on it. So some of those games like Minecraft are fantastic games for children to develop creativity, problem solving, all those aspects are built in. Uh, critical thinking comes in when they're playing games like that, uh, kind of designs that they are able to come up with. And um, some of those destructive games, I'm not in favor of ever and have ever been. I don't think any educator or any parent would be in favor of. But some of the games are great for children to be spending time with. 
it does help them uh, multitask. I mean, uh, when I see children play games, um, moving from uh, an online game to even an offline game, and um, or, or playing games on, let's say, Xbox and things like that, I can't do the things that they do, honestly. They're looking at the screen and their hands are moving. So it is it is your multi, multi sensorially they're moving around, their mind is thinking what move they have to make. So it is building their uh, thinking ability um, to an extent. But again, anything of excess is never the best thing for any individual. So excess gamification, be it online, it's not good. Offline can be a great way to kind of engage children. Yes, ma'am. And parents are definitely, it, it's a great help for parents. Uh, all these principles are really important and now they'll be able to judge which game is better for their child. So Manakshi ma'am, would you like to add upon? Uh, yeah, certainly. And whatever ma'am is saying, ma'am has already mentioned, uh, I also uh, am in favor of uh, this Minecraft is a wonderful game. And uh, another thing I would like to say, see, as Minecraft, whatever, if I'm uh, thinking, uh, number of tools are available on this online to engage the children on this virtual platform. So last year, April 2020, this was a great challenge for all of us. If I would like to say none of my teachers, they knew how to conduct the online classes. This was a great challenge. So we had to empower them. First of all, as you all clearly mentioned, I believe like I need to empower myself if I need to empower my team. I will not be completely, uh, you see, depending upon outsourcing. It's not feasible. Financially also, it is very difficult. So why not to have our own learning and development cell where we can empower each other, peer tutoring. If it is for the children, it is for the teachers as well. So we are learning and we are empowering our teachers. That time it was a great challenge for us to how to conduct this online uh, classes and all. We empowered each other, we learned, and then the children, they were not engaged. We were, we were feeling like they're not at all engaged. Maybe they were not feeling as interested as they were in the physical classroom. So we uh, like started uh, searching for, hunting for some uh, kind of strategies to involve them on this on online platform. So we uh, went for gamification on this online platform. We wanted to engage them on this online platform. I know that it, reduce, uh, it just increased the screen time, but our objective was more attendance on this virtual platform so that they should look forward to this online classes. And slowly and gradually, you see, uh, we also uh, realized like this is increasing a lot of pressure, a lot of stress on the teachers as well, on the students as well. Students are attending the classes. Teachers are also, uh, you see, not only they are there on screen for the online classes, they, after the school hours, they have to research a lot. They have to prepare the resources online, maybe these worksheets, uh, some kind of, uh, we are having a variety of students over here. They belong to different categories, right? I told you uh, our objective is reaching the unreached. The children who are residing in the remote areas, they cannot attend the online classes. For them preparing the material that they can access during asynchronous mode, Okay, and preparing the worksheets, keeping the handouts ready at the, I mean, school reception from where they can pick, maybe they can come once in a week and they can pick up all those resources from there. So this was a great challenge for us and uh, we wanted to reduce the screen time. But then it came to my mind as online mode is really irresistible. We, once we pick up our mobile phone, we keep on searching in the uh, mobile. We just check the notifications on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, or let me check Instagram also, or let me check Twitter also. Uh, we keep on checking then WhatsApp messages. We keep on replying and we do not realize really when and when I just get up at six o'clock. If I start checking it, I don't realize when it's 7.30. Oh my God, I have to rush. I have to uh, make breakfast also. So this is irresistible. And I do agree with Mr. Rahul, like if through inculcation of this board games, through different kinds of game, can we make this offline mode also irresistible? Certainly by reducing the screen time, by a lot of engagement, and we can let them think critically, problem solving, decision making, and more family time. Pooja ma'am very well said 
like uh, suppose i'm also working my husband is also working my children they are also on this thing. we are not having time for each other we are saying the same time we are having our meetings i am having my school you are having your classes we can have some family time we can play those board games where we can have a lot of communication and the children they will be able to okay they have to follow some, some kind of rules that are being made over there and i would like to mention here we had one session in our school on tools as toys for learning teaching learning method so the children they made their own toys best out of waste and even the teachers they used them as uh, i mean tools for teaching learning methodologies so that was very interesting i said okay learn from your toys itself so uh, toys games that would be had a lot of fun over there so this is what i just wanted to say i am using this methodology to support my curriculum to support my curriculum i know uh, during this uh, covid time the quantity is not being focused on we are focusing on quality so what i think is like if it doesn't matter like how much they learn it matters like whatever they learn how are they utilizing it so this is our focus and we are trying our level best to achieve it that's so wonderful ma'am and keeping all the principles in mind that have been mentioned by minakshi ma'am and neeti ma'am my next question is to pooja ma'am and that is that what are some techniques that can help us achieve gamification of learning uh to begin with uh, the question uh, which you asked uh, which i would like to uh, actually congratulate minakshi ma'am that uh, minakshi ma'am very well said that uh, during this time when we are focusing on e learning we are having virtual classes we actually need to focus more on the quality which the children are learning not on quantity and i think slowly and gradually we are able to make our parents also realize that because initially it was really difficult for us as teachers as facilitators to make the parents understand that yes the screen time more of screen time is not good for the children but uh, i personally feel parents who were working it was very difficult for them initially to manage uh, it was like a big task for them to manage their uh, meetings uh, simultaneously uh, managing their children because they used to feel that every uh, thing is actually you know on them on their shoulders they have taken the entire responsibility on themselves and it was really difficult for them especially to parents who were where in both the parents were working and uh, the children were very small so initially they were also facing lot of uh, problems but slowly and gradually uh, when we counseled them and it you know it was a good learning experience for us as facilitators and for us as parents also right and i think gamification plays a very vital role why because uh, this is the time of uh, e learning basically and uh, till date we were actually using gadgets we were uh, i personally feel children were using mobile phones their tablets their pcs and all these things just to play games to watch movies and uh, that's it they, the vision that they the these gadgets could actually be used for uh, taking online classes or maybe uh, for e learning for watching some good informative videos was not uh, you know uh, in their mind for, especially to the rural uh, background if i talk about till date it's very difficult if you have a parent from a rural background to make them understand that yes uh, online classes are equally good uh because especially at this time when a child is sitting idle at home and uh, they are not doing any any constructive thing they are learning lot of good things by uh, taking online classes it's it's the need of the hour right so uh, i personally feel uh, there are a lot of techniques wherein gamification plays a vital role because it actually helps us uh, to take children uh, you know to think out of the box this is a technique which actually helps them to uh you know to use their high order thinking skills especially as a child or even as an adult if we play any video game or any game uh we have a different kind of energy which actually you know which charges us all right so uh especially when children were having regular online classes they were children since we cater to activity based learning but still uh, gradually uh, there were times when teachers were only catering to lecture method 
because it was not even you know they were also not finding uh, good uh, after a certain period of time taking back to back online classes because initially it was a task for the teachers to make parents understand that the screen time since we are uh, catering to smart classes and all so our teachers were well versed with technology we had no problem the teachers faced a uh, very minimal problem in taking online classes but then gradually uh, you know they it was very monotonous for them to take online classes so then we started conducting lot of sessions and we uh, we actually empowered them and there were a lot of uh, things which we actually tools which we actually introduced to help them make the classes more interactive so i personally feel uh, this is uh, the gamification actually helps the uh, children you know they don't have any fear of failure they know uh, you know uh, they actually determine their own success criteria they don't have uh, you know they don't have to they don't they are they are not bound and they don't uh, lose the sight of uh, learning right they have they set their own objective it actually helps the learner to uh, enhance their knowledge to enhance their skills and uh, it's not only mirroring uh, you know but there is one thing which teachers need to keep in mind while uh, introducing gamification in the classes that the knowledge of the children should not hamper it's not that uh, as facilitators we should only have this thing in mind that the children should score good scoring good should not only be the agenda the children should learn and evolve and they should be able to deliver the same uh, in a you know very uh, constructive way moreover uh, they should come up with a very compelling story they should create story which should have lot of uh, characters where in student should be able to uh, uh, perform in uh, you know different ways and they should come out uh, with very good e learning strategy where in children should enjoy each and every session the next thing is they should have a personalized competition they should uh, you know nothing should be uh, it should neither be too easy nor it should be too difficult for a uh, student uh, to crack that uh, game which the teachers are actually planning for the students to make that particular uh, you know concept uh, to make that particular concept understand to a student it should be based on uh, the levels of the students which you are catering to it should neither be too simple it should uh, nor be too difficult otherwise the students will lose interest and we will not be able to get what we are actually expecting yes so yes. i personally feel there are a lot of ways wherein gamification should be introduced in the classes we should uh, actually uh, create a basic storyline with uh, different characters or very interesting avatars like why children take a lot of interest in cartoons or uh, movies which are uh, related to fiction why because they have very interesting characters so we should actually create lot of interesting characters and sh students should be made uh, uh, you know responsible for actually portraying, portraying the roles of those characters because they really take lot of interest and when uh, the student takes uh, interest in all these things and they perform nicely we should actually uh, have a reward system for all the students we should hand out batches we should actually encourage lot of team work so there are various things which actually help gamification yes ma'am so keeping in mind all of these things my next question is to rahul sir and that is that can gamification of learning have adverse effects on students so uh, i'm going to answer this question um, with regards to both online and uh, offline kind of gaming learning and uh, the pretty short answer is i don't think either of them can have any adverse effects because even online learning if you see um it's a concept that is more widely being accepted and more widely being trying to trying to be used in all the schools because i think nowadays you notice that uh, students are smarter like back in back in our days we had just one concept which was which was mugging up the books or you know as they say wo rat ratne ka hai so now it's a uh, the the kids are a lot smarter so they we need to realize that the way of teaching them also has to change and also um their span of concentration has reduced a bit so that's why uh, gamification is so important and i don't think it can have any adverse effects except that too much gamification as ma'am already mentioned could lead to addiction but as long as it's monitored by the parents where i feel like the parents have a, an important role to play then i think it will be fine great sir 
Okay, so my next question is to Neeti, ma'am, and that is that would teachers be able to adapt to this new approach of learning and will they want to accept this? Thank you, Nikita, for the question. Can I just add to what Mr. Rahul's question was? And I was really keen to add because uh, Ms. Pooja also said something about uh, of giving badges and uh, things like that to children while they are at gamification. I see one adverse effect. I agree with Mr. Rahul that there are really no game adverse effects of gamification, be it offline, online. But I do see one adverse effect of excessive use of badges and rewards because that then builds an extra competition within the children and the joy of learning starts to diminish and everything becomes very competitive. Um, if you were to read um, or listen to one of these educationists who talks about um, a reward system, Alfie Cohen, he says it very beautifully in his book. The book's title is Punishing by Rewards and he talks about how rewards can be deterrent to one's learning and progress because then you only become reward oriented so my only apprehension with excess gaming is actually using too much of reward system just the right quantity they do need motivation just the right quantity and quality would it would be really helpful there um, sorry i just digressed from my question but i was so wanted to add this and uh, yes, since, since yes, the rewards and badges were mentioned so i thought i should add that um, so when you talk about adaptation of this method for teachers um, when we go into the rural areas or we go into the, the, the cities where um, experiential learning has not evolved as much, though it has, a lot of things have changed, a lot has changed. I think the first step for teachers under gamification learning is for teachers to move away from being a teacher and becoming a facilitator, saying, you know, for the teacher to accept um once and for all that i don't know it all you know as teachers we are so thoroughly bred with saying that you're teachers and you're supposed to know everything because you're supposed to teach that right so when you're supposed to teach something to somebody you're supposed to know that really well and thoroughly but it is okay in the new age education system for a teacher to to tell and come up to the child and if the child asks once in a while to say miss how does this happen to teacher to say that uh, i don't know why don't we both find out together it's okay to accept that and be part of it and that takes a while that transition um, for the teacher to take place you know we're so used to um, when a child asks us a question we simply tell them the answer even as parents when they ask us those ten thousand questions ten thousand and one questions in our lifetime lifetime when they're growing up we keep responding to them um, we'd rather change our approach and when they are when the students are asking questions let them help them we should guide them to discover those answers um, so you're building a skill for them to find out for themselves see or you will not have the answers to all the infinite questions that they have so what next best thing can we do with especially the new age education and the way um, what Rahul had just said that we only mugged up things and they were just textbooks given and we learned it from there very few of us went out to the library to even get a reference book right now everything is there at the click of your finger. So you need to uh, build those skills in children. So as teachers, we need to be focusing on building those skills rather than saying, I will teach it all. I will teach the skills for the child to learn it all is what the approach has to start changing. Um, you know, you have to, as a teacher, you have to really give up your power of being a teacher. It, it is very challenging, you know, when, when in the classroom, um, and I keep, I've used this word a number of times to say from a teacher to a facilitator. Facilitator stands with the child and moves together. Uh, it is difficult and challenging, but right amount of uh, capacity building for teachers, right amount of, um, uh, you know, ex self explorations and just the way we're dealing with children putting teachers into the gamified platforms and letting them experience what really experiential learning looks like. Um, you know, when you do capacity building, instead of having a session where there is one facilitator who talks to them and there is front load to the teachers, that's how they're going to treat the children in the class. They will go and lecture in the class. But if your facilitators in capacity building are the ones who are engaging teachers in hands-on inquiry-based learning in the, in the sessions, that's what the teachers are going to do. So there, there would be a whole lot of um, professional development required with regards to teachers. How do you guide them? How do you take them uh, forward? Uh, the perspective has to change for teachers, for students, for parents, everybody. Um, it has to be that the child has to take the ownership um, and not 
just the teacher or the parent. Everybody has to be like partners in the development of the learning for child. And gamification is one of those beautiful platforms wherein everybody can be part of it. And I'm now only not only talking from point of view of online, but also offline mode of gamification where everybody can be equal partner partners and they can go together in the journey of that child and development of the child. Thank you. Most welcome, ma'am. And uh, we really abide by your words, which you mentioned that it's time to change our perspectives and it has to be done by parents, students and teachers. So uh, my next question uh, is to Pooja ma'am and that is that what gains can we look at through this approach? Uh, I would like to thank Neeta ma'am for explaining it beautifully. I think ma'am uh, the students have already started taking the ownership. Why? Because when we were catering to just regular online classes, uh, initially parents were very happy. Students were also very happy because they were uh, it was something new for them. But gradually it became very monotonous even for the parents. Why? Because it, uh, they were finding it very difficult. Uh, to uh, to actually inculcate that uh, zest in the children to attend the online classes, wherein they were not able to spend quality time with their uh, teachers, with their they, they were missing the physical school basically. So um, now when we are doing a lot of activities, we are introducing gamification in different ways in our classrooms. I think the students are also taking equal interest uh, as well as the facilitators. They are also enjoying taking the sessions because they are also adding to their knowledge, their experience. So uh, I personally feel that gamification actually helps uh, students. Uh, it actually caters to uh, enhance students' knowledge. They actually uh, pro helps us to promote uh, equal student participation. It also helps us to engage the students actively and constructively in our classrooms because otherwise it was very difficult to keep children uh, with us for 30 minutes or 40 minutes in an online class because most of the time, as you've already shared, that children used to just put the screenshot of their availability, but they were missing physically. So, and especially children uh, whose parents were busy, who were not able to give time to them, they were doing this. So uh, I personally feel uh, there are a lot of benefits which uh, gamification actually has. It actually, uh, you know, makes uh, classroom fun for the children. They are uh, responsible for what they are, what they are learning. They they take the ownership of attending their classes. They are the ones who, you know, who, who keeps uh, themselves engaged uh, in all the classes which are conducted online. And uh, it also helps to uh, increase their concentration span. Why? Because uh, anything which uh, is of interest to any student, the, you know, it becomes very easy for us as facilitators to keep our students involved uh, in that uh, you know, class which we are taking. Moreover, uh, you know, it acts as a motivation factor to students who were a uh, little hesitant in participating, in participating in the classroom activity. If I talk about online, whether I talk about online classes or whether I talk about offline classes. There are a lot of students uh, who were very hesitant in, uh, in any of the activities or in any of the sessions. So as teachers, we used to motivate them, but then also they were hesitant to speak. But here, when we involve gamification in the classroom, uh, they take the onus. They are, you know, they start taking uh, responsibilities. They start taking the charge, and they are equally uh, responsible. They take the, uh, you know, they take things very, very uh, enthusiastically. And uh, there is a, you know, a relaxed atmosphere in the class, where is, wherein learning becomes fun. This is a learner. They, if they, even if they fail, they don't, uh, you know, they, they are not afraid of. Uh, facing failures they fail then they try again to achieve success so i personally feel that it's a beautiful thing which we all must actually inculcate in our curriculum and um, it should be involved uh, on a regular basis whether we talk about online classes or whether we talk about offline classes it's a beautiful tool which has actually helped us to uh, to actually make the children think out of the box, we are actually helping learning uh, in the. We are actually involved, involving learning happen in the class rather than just teaching. And we, I personally feel as a facilitator that uh, we should always uh, encourage learning in the class rather than just teaching, because teaching is a one-way traffic. Wherein learning 
if we uh, actually encourage learning in the classroom that is you know the students are equally equally involved which is very very important yes ma'am so uh, it was mentioned by manakshi ma'am that uh, she had a workshop in her school which was related to toys and uh, to so ma'am if you can actually share your personal experience which you had with uh, learning and its gamification yeah uh, thanks nikita for, for this question like uh, as i have told you like initially our objective was to increase the engagement on this virtual platform on this virtual platform for the online classes because uh, uh, we had number of challenges children they were not looking forward to these classes and somewhere where the children they uh, were looking forward to these classes the parents they were reluctant uh, for this online classes they were thinking uh, like on on this online classes how can a child learn because we are thinking from the ways as we have been taught years ago we think face to face interaction can be the only medium of teaching so we had to uh, find certain uh, tools for engagement on this virtual platform and gamification was a wonderful way to uh, grab their attention on this virtual platform we involved them number of uh, strategies number of games so that they can devise their own games using the tools and how wonderful it would be suppose if a teacher see i am not uh, talking about uh, only the perspective from this uh, millennium cities and uh, from that i'm talking about uh, my school is located located in a place where the children they mostly they are coming from the remote areas okay it's a kind of semi urban place right so children they are having lack of devices too and uh, uh, three siblings at a home and one device and it was very difficult so we had some flexible kind of timetables as well and we wanted to in in uh, engross them on this uh, uh, teaching strategies on this virtual platform through number of tools and gamification was a real fun so we had a session on uh, toys as a tools uh, for teaching learning uh, right so the children they made their own toys as you see on cbse also arranged uh, lately uh, this uh, uh, i mean exhibition on toys teaching for teaching and learning so children they made their own toys so toys are what so gamification and uh, when we are talking about board games so certainly it should not always be keeping a board in the center and the uh, four or five children they are playing board games is like communication sitting together talking to each other it can be narrative something uh, okay go back we were also used to play uh, this um, our ancient games we talk about raja vajir chor sipahi and that is also gamification and see how we managed to our emotions you see we should, we should not guess like whether uh, what slip we are having in our hand so gamification is all about developing all 21st century skills communication creativity collaboration we are working in a team thinking critically right and uh, if i uh, talk about uh, from the curriculum perspective all math skills problem solving decision making critical thinking and probability you see playing on a, a a ludo game like when we are thinking like what is the probability of getting a 6 right and um, i mean to say reaching uh, iteration making iterations how i will be able to reach my home over there so this lot of planning is there so it's so wonderful and nowadays what all games we used to play tic tac toe raja vajir chor sipahi everything is available online but i would suggest we have to create a balance amongst both right it's not possible for us to take away the devices from our children at our yeah. time we were not having devices yeah. so we we were not playing we, we we did not have any option okay we used to play like that but now the children they are having their devices when they talk about i have ipod i have ipad i have this mobile i have that mobile they talk they listen they visualize even they love watching uh, the uh, you see reviews of different kind of mobiles and all when these things are available we cannot keep them away from it but we can always create some balance right let them play if if they are having the mobile phones they are playing that kind of destructive games we should not allow at least we should substitute those games with the educational ones like if they are spending some time on mobile they should play some educational games 
and along with that so to reduce the screen time to increase the family time uh, we should uh, spend some time on this offline games also that i have already told let us make this offline mode also irresistible that we should look forward to at seven o'clock maybe whatever time it is in the evening we, we all will sit together and we will all play some board game we will enjoy it and i would like to say let us steal those moments from our busy schedule to spend some time with the family and uh, we would really love it and this is the time when we all are under lockdown let us let us steal yeah. those moments and enjoy and have that fun and have a lot of engagement yeah thank you yes ma'am thank you so much for your wise words ma'am and we definitely need to take our time and have more of you know uh, playing and everything with our families uh, so rahul sir if you can summarize and if you want to say anything i uh, couldn't have agreed more with uh, what dr minakshi has said and i also wanted to conclude slightly by saying that online games i agree some teachers can try and teach the students but offline games especially is when parents should kind of put their hands up and say you know this is a great opportunity to spend some time with their children and at least for half an hour in a day or one hour in a day everyone can take some time out of their schedule just to sit together spend time together and i agree uh, earlier maybe they used to sit together and just talk and chat because they maybe only had one hour free in the day but now definitely because everyone is at home uh, there's a lot more time they have so parents also can can try and use these kind of games and these kind of learning methods to also uh, get into teaching their children a bit more because the physical presence of school is uh, you know not guaranteed for the near future or most schools are not even open as of now then parents can you know kind of interfere a little bit and act as the second teacher what my second teacher i mean they were anyway the first teacher as pooja ma'am has said that you know parents are the first guru so uh, yeah i just want to conclude by saying this and also i want to want to thank all the uh, the principals and all the teachers who have uh, kind of held their held their nerve and done so well these past few months and i think past few years now because it's been difficult for them as well so for them to adjust and still put their students at the top of their priority list it's a big hats off to them and uh, it also gives me great pleasure in knowing that the principals here on this call and also i'm hoping principals out there in the world know so much about games and are trying to use games like battleship and minecraft and and these kind of games to to use it to teach students to make it a lot more fun so it, it gives me great pleasure in knowing that these techniques are still being used so that's it i, I i'll conclude with that i want to say something whatever you have said just right now we too love gamification we too uh, love to have badges right leader votes we do have we we uh, like if i talk about like learning and all i should learning should continue learn for life right um, we we also should yeah. empower ourselves learning google tools microsoft tools minecrafts whatever what not i mean whatever the latest feature comes we try ourselves and then we teach our uh, students too like they should uh, go for it and really it's just irresistible yeah. i would also like to add something yes, I so, personally, thank you, Bitta. I personally feel that uh, game yeah, is yeah. a beautiful tool. Why? Because it's a student-friendly tool. It uh, helps the students to fight back. And uh, during economic recession, also, I would say that uh, gaming industry is the only industry which was which was actually evolving. So gamification should be uh, actually used uh, in all the classrooms, be it virtual classrooms, be it online classrooms. so as uh, the students uh, should you know it is actually catering to all kinds of learners it actually motivates students to actively participate in all the classroom teaching that's it yes ma'am uh, so neeti ma'am last few words from your side as well to all the parents out there who will be watching this session and the students too thank you nikita uh, i think to all the parents just one little thing is that uh, what all the other uh, guests and panelists have said it again and again is to reduce the already increased screen time uh, and to indulge more in board games and family time 
um, I would agree with so many games and just remembering all those games which we would we would play as children. But even now, the parents can engage in some of those um, offline uh, board games with engaging with their children. And beyond that, to get more creative, for the parents to get more creative. And if they are not able to think of creative ways, get after the lives of the teachers. They will suggest interesting creative things which are more offline, which are more hands-on, you know, as simple tasks like cooking together, um, you know, working together or, or just um, doing the laundry folding together. That's also a time engaged with the children, very young ones and with the older ones, teaching them skills. Cooking is such an important skill and bringing in that into their real time not always all, all the time you can have board games available to be able to play, but you can invent and create those games. Um, my personal experience of learning very quick and fast math calculations is a cards game called Sweep. I don't know how many of you have known it or played it. My mother and I would play it, just two partners, and we would keep a count of what's gone and what's not gone. And that, you know, quick calculations, it's still on my mind. And so these, some of these uh, games, not just uh, card games, but other than that, a lot of other games also, like somebody mentioned about Ludo, just to spend that time, it is, it is precious. You will not get that childhood again with your child, to spend that time with your child. So make the best out of it. We know and we understand uh, that times are difficult. You're working from home. You are challenged with a lot of home tasks, but please take out that precious time for your children. That's just my last words for the parents. Thank you so much, ma'am, for these kind and wise words. And with this, it comes to an end to our session. I would like to thank all our panelists for taking out time in these tough times and attending this session. This session is really helpful to all the parents who will be watching this. So a big thanks to all our panelists. Thank you. Thank you.